Hello everyone and welcome to another Scots We Hate podcast and it's the fourth of what we are now calling the Braidwood Brothers podcasts uh, with my brother Andy. How are you doing Andy? I'm okay Ali, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good and for anyone who hasn't seen these before, we've already done uh, one looking at our best albums of the 80s, the 90s, the noughties. So this time we get round, it's the 2000s tens and this will be the last time we do this for at least a decade I guess. Um, was it easy to come up with 10 for this decade? Yeah yeah it was it was it wasn't it, the, the, the tricky thing was getting it down to what I felt I wasn't letting anyone down or you know that kind of thing yeah it was, yeah. Uh, it was to get it down into uh, not that anyone cares what I think, of course, but you know what I mean. Um, I know exactly you know, what you mean. I mean, yeah, I want yeah. to say as well, if anyone's missing from this list, there's loads of people I absolutely love. and, and he, that, Heaps heaps of people that I love. Uh, I, I love their music, but these are just ones that I've kind of been listening to a lot recently. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about it a bit, but there's, there's quite a few of mine from the last couple of years. Um, there's a few from very early on in the decade, but there's a few from the last couple of years, because that's what I've been listening to a lot. Mm -hmm. Recently, and if I was to, um, if you were asked me to do this again tomorrow, I think there could be easily be 10 completely different titles there. Mm -hmm. um, so let's kick off with your uh, first choice, Andy, of your favourite mm -hmm. albums of the 2010s. Well, this one, uh, I, I just, I bought on spec, like I say, I'm going to hold it up and for podcast listeners, it's a, it's a big, uh, solid book with gold writing on the front that says spell songs Very nice with, a, with a yeah it's lovely and so inside the book you've got the cd mm -hmm. i can't get used to the uh, zoom being around the wrong way but there you go and um it has people like um uh kareen paul wart uh, julie fowlis jackie morris um there's a whole bunch of people on there but it was it was a project set up by I think it's a company called Folk by the Oak, right? Sponsored by sponsored by the Art Council of England, funnily enough. But it's you know it's, it's mostly Scottish people on it. But um, and it's all a, it's all a, it's all based on nature. Uh, and uh, the song about the chestnut is my very favourite. Is it uh, quite witchy? Kind of witchy, Ali. Oh, yes. I like it. I like it. Yeah. I do. Yeah, it's a lovely it's it's book. It's just lovely. I, I bought it like I say, Aberfeldy Watermill. Is my favourite Aber, well, several favourite Aberfeldy shops, but that's one of them. Oh, that's a great bookshop, yeah. Yeah, I must it. check that out. I don't know that at mm -hmm. all. Okay, yep. my first choice is The Suns and their uh, album, also called The Suns. If you can't see that properly, it's very important when you Google them to put brackets around the last S or you want the right band. Um, and the, the cover kind of tells you a lot about their sound. It's a lovely sepia colour with a man alone on a beach and on the back a woman alone on the beach. And uh, the Suns um, were one of the first uh, bands I really got into after starting Scots Way Hay in 2009. This album came out in 2011. But um, this was the decade I really got back into um, listening to uh, bands and going to loads of gigs and really became involved again in what is a really vibrant Scottish music scene. And I know you did as well, because we'll talk about them more later, but you started putting mm -hmm. on gigs at the gallery in Braemar, didn't you? Yeah, that's, that's how I, all my choices are more or less up to date. Uh, bands that I've seen or... Um, CDs that I've picked up at concerts or things like that. It's gone from from ordering things online back to actually buying a CD or a or a record off the artist at the gig, which I love to do. So, and it's great that you can get them up to play in your almost in your back garden, if you like. I, I subsidise it by selling tickets, but yeah, it's just it's really get me getting bands that I want to see playing in my place. Yeah. So if you don't know the Suns, um, they are. A band uh, who is kind of indie folk, almost psychedelic sound that they have. Um, great songs. Um, they've got a new album um, coming out quite soon, actually. The Creatures We Were Before Ghosts. Um, I was heard a couple of tracks. In fact, a new track just out this week, which is just superb. But I'm still playing this almost a decade after buying it. 
and mm. it remains um, a, just a great record. And that's the sign of a great record, I think, when you, you're, you're still playing it years and years mm -hmm. later. Uh, and it's quite interesting, you know, after looking at your book, and again, apology, um, audio only people, but around this time when people were sending CDs or releasing CDs, before the vinyl um, resurgence really kicked in, they were really, you know, there were so many ways that they were trying to, you know, there's little pictures or there would be badges or there would be, you know, mm -hmm. there was a real indie, and this is on an indie label. This is from Olive mm -hmm. Grove, which I'll talk about mm -hmm. a bit more. Um, and they were really putting their all into getting their music out there. It was real admirable. It was yeah. Really, and it kind of yeah. went through the whole decade, that kind of DIY um, ethos, uh, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, second choice from you. Second choice from me. I'm going to grab one at random. I think I'll grab this one. In fact, no, I'll grab that one. Oh, people who yourself. haven't seen this before, the way it works yeah. is I am kind of uh, anally going through it in a uh, order of years and everything. And Andy, uh, uh, he's the jazz man. He's picking up <laughs> very much the jazz man. <laughs> um, so let's. Oh yes. So this is Warren's album, Warren and the Starry Skies yep. from Glasgow. And um, uh, this album is just, uh, I just, especially the um, title track, the Be Kind uh, track is just absolutely beautiful. But it's a great album, um, amazing songs on it. And uh, a, Warren was up playing quite recently at the gallery and uh, that was a great night. But um, I just, I just, yeah, I, I, it, and it, it just came out at that time where people were maybe entertaining the thought of being a bit more kind and what, you know, a bit... It certainly a bit struck a chord. It certainly struck yeah, yeah. a chord with people I, uh, that I know. Um, uh, we're both lucky enough to be uh, friendly with one, um, but he he's one of these people, go back to what I just said about um, DIY and supporting other bands. There's this... Mm a real uh, um, network of people who really are doing their best, not just to get their own music out there, but mm -hmm. to support other people. And mm -hmm. uh, Warren McIndar does that as well as anyone, I would say. And the band mm -hmm. are great. I and mean, what he does, as you'll know, is um, get fantastic musicians around him. So he can either mm -hmm. have, have full bands or just even he can play solo. But you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a strategy which works very, very well. No, it's a fantastic album. So if anyone doesn't have it, that's one that's worth getting. And you're right about that song, Be Kind. It really struck a chord. And uh, uh -huh. I know he's played it at people's it. weddings and a lot of people, uh, you know, yeah, it's a superb song. Okay. And yeah. uh, next for me is, it's another um, Olive Grove Records one, actually. Interesting. Mm. There's no um, a mistake about that because at the beginning all of, when I started I got I was writing um, mainly about books and stuff like that and then I got mm -hmm. to do a column for um, Dear Scotland website writing a monthly column on Scottish books mm -hmm. while Lloyd Meredith from Olive Grove which at the time he was running with Helena Rafai as well from podcast mm -hmm. and many many other things Helena does now um, they were running Olive Grove records together and I got to know him and them as maybe the first Scottish indie label that I really kind of um, would come to know well and, and, and try and support and yeah, fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. Joe Mango. I've yeah. realized that uh, as I kind of get older, voices mean more to me, perhaps, you know, really fantastic singers. There's something about them that kind of affects me more than other instruments and things like that. And Joe- That's what's- kind of, uh -huh. Sorry to interrupt you. That's what's so good about the Spell Songs uh, CD that I was showing you, that it's all about the voice and it's recorded exquisitely. You can really hear the voices brilliantly. So. Well, I think, you know, uh, Joe Mango is someone who is absolutely yeah. an incredible singer. Um, it became the case that if we really liked, I say we and I a lot with Scots Way and stuff, don't worry about it, but um, if you really liked uh, musicians, we asked them onto the Scots Who Hate podcast. And we did mm -hmm. that with Joe. She, uh, one of my favorite podcasts, actually. Um, the first time we went to record it, um, Ian couldn't make it. So mm -hmm. me and my friend Chris Ward 
tried to record it and it was just ridiculous. We couldn't even turn the bloody thing on. So mm -hmm. Joe very kindly came back another time, the only person that right. to do that, to re-record it. And she played a couple of uh, tracks um, in the living room. And, you know, a bit like you having people at the gallery, it was just so special to be able to sit mm -hmm. there and hear one of your favourite musicians playing in your front room. It was brilliant. But mm -hmm. um, this album is Murmuration. Um, 2012 it came out and um, it's just got fantastic songs in it. It's very much kind of similar to Spell songs, I think, kind of modern folk inflection and done it in a really brilliant way. Mm -hmm. And some mm -hmm. of the musicians on it include um, James Yorkston, The Pictish Trail, Adrian Crowley, mm -hmm. Chris uh, Dreamer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're part of the Murmuration Orchestra. And I don't know if it's on this album, but it's certainly on one album that uh, Madrigal's Choir sing on one of the mm -hmm. tracks as well. Um, Fantastic. So yeah, check that out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, Olive Grove Records, I will talk about other record labels as we move on, but very, mm -hmm. very special. And what Helena and Lloyd were doing um, when I started to, to get back into music, really a huge influence on me, a really big influence on what I wanted to do and listen to and all of that stuff. Okay, Andy, mm -hmm. number three before I go on for much longer. Okay, number three, I don't have it. And I wonder if I can just... Can I do that? Yes. Hey. Up a bit more. Oh, there, uh, for people listening at home, it's uh, the, the Freedom Frequency by Steg G and the Freestyle Master. Hey, now that yeah. is recent, Andy. Yeah, well, that's uh, 2017. Yeah. And um, I've, uh, in the past, listened to, uh, you know, uh, 20 years ago, I suppose, it was uh, a bit of hip hop and uh, Eminem particularly, I really liked. And yeah. uh, but, they, they, but they were all rapping about stuff that I had no idea what, you know, it's no, whereas, you know, your man, uh, Freestyle Masters, rapping about buying your mum, buying your Farah's, doing at the Barra's and stuff like that. And it's just fantastic because on first listen, just totally got it, got, you know, got the, got where everything was coming from. And uh, it, like I say, I, I like that kind of hip hop style. I don't listen to I don't listen to hip hop a lot, but when you want to do that and you want that certain sound, and uh, it's just fantastic. And obviously, Steg G seems to be working with everybody uh, at the moment. You know. Yep, he won the Scottish Alternative Music Awards Hip Hop Artist last year, I think. I think it was. Did he? Right, think right. So. And um, it's all new to me. All the Scottish. He's been there rap. for like, he's been mm -hmm. around for a long time, and should say. Yes. That the Scottish hip hop scene is absolutely thriving. Like you, mm. I you know don't know it that well, but mm. um, through doing the radio shows more recently, oh. I'm getting more and more uh, into it. And there's some mm -hmm. amazing musicians and uh, uh, artists out there. I mean, I knew well, that, you know the bigger names like Loki and Solar Eye and, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, but there's just so many people. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Like I say, I just something that passed me by. I mean, why? What, I just didn't think it would be a thing. And then you go looking for it, you go digging for it, and you think, wow, it's all absolutely fantastic music. And that one, particularly that Freedom Frequency, just hit me. I just thought it was an amazing album. So that's always on my um, phone for um, when I'm scooting about. Excellent. Excellent. So my third choice is quite a personal choice. Um, it's the Alistair Gray, A Life in Progress. Mm. Um, you're, you're right, you're reading it back to front, but that's what that says there. Alistair Gray, mm. A Life in Progress. And it's um, inspired by Kevin Cameron's film of the same name. The music's mm. by Scott Twynham, who um, was in Looper. Um, mm. And a, the spoken word in it from Alistair himself. And um, in uh, the last decade, I was very lucky to do and beyond, uh, do some work with Alistair, first as one of his secretaries and then uh, as an editor of his book, uh, of me and others when I was at Cargo Publishing. So um, I got to know him pretty well, I suppose. There's other people who know him much, much better, but um, he was a huge influence in, in my life uh, over that time. And what's lovely about this is it means more to me now than it did mm -hmm. when I bought it because he's no longer with us and you get to hear him on this, you know. We did, I've done a couple of podcasts with him as well, which you can go and check out if you go to scottsohey.com. They're all there. But uh, yeah, this and it's a one that's mainly instrumental, mm -hmm. beautiful instrumental, 
but there's also hidden speak, spoken word and uh, highly, I, I think this is quite hard to get. I think it mm -hmm. might be kind of sold out now and it's a bit of a rarity, but uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I'd love to hear it because he had such a unique speaking voice and, you know, I can and imagine... And you love this, the music, yeah, Scott's yeah. music is just yeah. heartbreaking and it's, it's all, you know, the, the titles are things like Writing on a Train, Early mm -hmm. Days, The Art School Dance, mm -hmm. the Art School Clock, The Glasgow Where I Live, Notes from yeah. the Underground, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's all about... It. A Life in Progress kind of says it mm -hmm. all. It's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it looks great. Okay, number yeah, four from you. For for me, you know, like a, you know, like a Christmassy thing. Yes, you do. And uh, so I've got uh, Aidan Moffat. In, ah, um, that's brilliant. Cooper. There we are. So I got this. Uh, I ordered it. It's a thing of beauty for people who are listening. It comes in a in a lovely um, Christmassy uh, sleeve, and and it came with uh, Christmas cards and all sorts of things. But it's really kind of that. Dickensian dark Christmas type thing uh, where he uh, there's some spoken word stuff on it where he's examining his own paunch in the in the mirror at Christmas time and things like that and uh, uh, he, he does um, Only You which um, Yazoo now, was it Yazoo because I thought that was maybe a cover Flying Pickets well Flying Pickets covered Yazoo right okay so on your age Ali ah well but and your wisdom. Yeah. So so is uh, Aiden. Aiden had a great uh, decade. I mean, just making you know, some amazing. Uh, he made films, did soundtracks. We're, again, when we were at Cargo, we did a kids' book with him, which was quite mm -hmm. odd. And uh, of course, uh, his album with Bill Wells won the very first Scottish Album of the Year award. More of which mm -hmm. later. But yeah, he uh, he had a great time. That's a fantastic album. Though. It's a real. It's just an album to listen to on your own in a dark room. Uh, it's very atmospheric and uh, it's just brilliant. There's, so there's what's it called again? I missed that. It's called, I guess because I didn't tell you, it's called uh, Ghost Stories for Christmas. So yeah, it's, it's, it's just brilliant. It's well worth uh, seeking out if it's still available. I don't know if it is. Emma Pollock's on it, I've just realised. Um, yeah. Yeah, come, no yeah. Well though. Okay. Next one. Well, next one for me, I think we're at number four, is mm -hmm. the, the Deadline Shakes and okay. Zealots. And this came out in 2015. I should say the Alistair Gray one came out in 2014. But, so this came out in 2015. And um, another record label who inspired me and perhaps got me out to gigs again uh, more than any other were um, Flowers in the Dustbin, who were run by uh, Stephen McKee. I'm not a great music lover. I haven't seen Stephen for ages. A superb guy. Anyway, um, I could have picked Mummy Shot Arms album, um, For Able, Kick to Kill. They're all on the label. But I've gone mm. with Deadline Shakes and Zealots because it's a real spiky pop album that kind of feeds your mind as it's making you dance. It's a, a, a great collection of pop songs. And it kind of signifies my move almost from listening to the music that people were sending in to then going out to gigs to see them and get to know them and and being asked out to these places again um yeah it was, it's a it's a great album but flowers in the dustbin if you do not know their stuff go and check it out um uh, superb really superb back catalog they don't do loads of stuff but when they do it's always interesting and excellent mm -hmm. number five Number five for me will be Zoe Bestel. Excellent. From uh, Last Night from Glasgow, of course. Um, that album, I just listen to that when I'm stressed and it, and it, and it, and it does uh, de-stress me. And there's, there's particularly a track on it called Grey Skies, which is one of my all-time favourite tracks now. Um, and uh, they're just so... She sings so quietly and I don't know what the technique is whether it's close to the microphone with the lock compression or whatever but it's just crystal clear and and with very um normally very sparse accompaniment usually I think it's a ukulele she uses yeah. or some version some version of a, a ukulele and uh it's just a wonderful album 
really, really special album, I think. That one. I uh, was going to pick that one, but I guessed that you would as well. I adore that mm -hmm. record, I have to say. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's definitely one of my favourite uh, albums of the decade. And as I say, I would have picked it, but I thought you might, so we could talk mm -hmm. about it. I think mm -hmm. um, I love Zoe's sound. As you say, it's so understated. You almost have to get closer to the... the mm -hmm. um, the headphone mm -hmm. you can't get close to the headphones closer I to the speakers mean, no. you know what i mean mm -hmm. you almost have to listen and she makes yeah. you listen intently and that's a draw you in did you draw draw people out by singing quietly and what you what i don't expect her to be able to hit the, the high notes singing that quietly but she can and it's just an incredible uh, gift she's a really special talent and while we're you know we're talking about record labels since you mentioned uh, last night from glasgow we should mention them because in a way, they were real, well, for me, they were real game changers in the model that they did, mm -hmm. uh, the non-for-profit, uh, and they just seemed to grow year on year. I, I interviewed um, Ian Smith and Murray Easton, who was involved um, quite early on, to discuss with them what they were doing, and by that point, they'd only released a couple half albums, maybe the first Sister John and Mark Johnson's albums. Mm -hmm. Um, but since then, they've gone on to release uh, so, so many great records. And, uh, and I've had a huge impact uh, on Scottish culture in general, I think, not just on Scottish music. But the way they've, uh, they've uh, changed the way that you could do things, I think, has been really, really interesting. And they also collaborate with a lot of people, going back to that point mm -hmm. I made earlier, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, hats off to them. As you're talking, I'm thinking, oh, I've forgotten so and so, and I've forgotten such and such an album. You know, you think there's all these albums you could have mentioned on this particular. Oh, definitely. Lot. Yeah. Well, I start, I honestly, just to let people know, I did start with 30. That I went, mm -hmm. each, every one of these could be in my top 10. And then mm -hmm. I just had to, had to whittle it down. And it came down to about lunchtime today on my lunch break, kind of going, okay, I'm going to go with that. You just have to make a choice. One that was always going to, someone that was always going to make it, might not have been this album, is Catherine Joseph. Yeah. Bones You've Thrown and Blood I've Spilled, which came out in 2015. I, I could have chosen uh, any of her uh, albums, I have to say, but I went with this one because, one, it was the introduction to me, to her mm -hmm. music. Um, before it was released, I think you could get a couple of tracks online and... Uh, it was kind of mysterious, who is this person, this amazing voice. Um, at least it was mysterious to me, I didn't know her. And then she released this, and of course this won the Scottish Album of the Year Awards as well. And I think if I had to pick a, an artist of the decade for me, it would be Catherine Joseph. She is just astonishing. Um, Otherworldly, but yet really truthful and honest in what she sings about and how she sings it. If you ever get to see her live, and I've been lucky enough to see her quite a few times. It's spellbinding. I mean, you can hear a pin drop as just this voice and piano as it often is, although she's done other kind of bigger um, projects as well. But I mean, yeah, just an astonishing musician. What a voice, what a songwriter. And yeah, I just adore um, Catherine Joseph. She's great. And I could have picked anything from her. She's incredibly charismatic, you know, I just can't, can't can't take her eyes off her when she's performing. It's, no, it's, no, absolutely. It's, and, 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 and same when you put the records on, that's a real kind of, right, you won't hear from me for the next, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it is, hour, because I'm just going to listen to this from start to finish. And she just pulls you emotionally in all these different directions. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, number six, I think, from you, if I'm right. Six, okay. Um, I'm going to do this. I couldn't find my copy, so I've got, I've got this print out here. This is um, Jenny Sturgeon from uh, from the Scheme, which is it's technically a second album. Or she had a kind of EP out, and then uh, then she brought this out. Um, now, when did she bring it out? Anyway, it, it falls within the time zone. Yeah. But oh, no, uh, she has it. some uh, amazing songs on that. There's a song called "Running Free," which is just uh, amazing. Yes, the the uh, she had an EP before that called Source to the Sea, which is really really good as well. Uh, Johnny Hardy from um, the old Blind Dogs plays on that as well, and um, a, so yeah, no, it's it's a cracker. I, um, what can I tell you about it? I mean, I've followed Jenny for a long, long time now, and it one of those voices. We keep coming back to this. I think it's a kind of I don't know what it is, Ali, but with these very, very um, 
well-recorded uh, character, full voices, yeah. I suppose, you, you know, a voice that you really want to listen to. It's not been covered up by reverb and autotune and, and, and pitch correct and all the rest of it. It's someone singing properly. Uh, nah, that sounds really snobby. Nah, I don't mean that, but you know what I mean? It's a raw thing, but it's absolutely beautiful to listen to. Um, well, it's, uh, yeah. the, it's folk music, what we're talking about at the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's been a tradition of great folk singers that they will just hold a room with yeah. their voice and the song alone. And I think mm -hmm. that's what Jenny does so well, either solo mm -hmm. or um, with Salt House, which mm -hmm. uh, I could have picked one of their albums quite easily. Mm -hmm. um, she's an astonishing musician and singer. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. And of course, she played at the gallery as well, didn't she? She's played a couple of times in various uh, different formats, as uh, with Salt House or with uh, Jenny Sturgeon. Um, and I was lucky enough to go to a couple of songwriting classes that was held up in the village that she was really good at that as well. So, um, yes, fantastic artist. Um, so that's one I would definitely recommend for people to find out because her voice is just, it's just such an incredible voice. Could you say the name again for me with my terrible memory? This is uh, Jenny Sturgeon from the Skeen, which is the one, it's the one with the, the sort of Canada geese on the front. Okay. Excellent. Which, I, which I believe are her um, uh, lino cuts as well. Yeah. Okay, number six for me, uh, Modern Studies. Mm. Well too great. And I, it's the first uh, Modern Studies album. Once again, I could have picked any of them. Just I love this band. Um, the, the term, uh, Supergroup has kind of often got negative connotations, I think, over the years. But modern studies um, include Emily Scott, Rob St. John, Joe Smiley, and Pete Harvey. And I've got those people on other records in my collection playing with lots of different people. So they really are, you know, they are a super group. They're just incredible. Mm -hmm. They do work so well together. Um, and when I see them live, I've seen them play small when it's just been the four of them. I've seen them in a big thing at Edinburgh Festival where they've had backing singers and they've, you know, had a full orchestra, the Pumpkinhead Orchestra have been playing. Um, uh, but it's the songs which shine through. And the harmonies between Emily and Rob are very, very special indeed. You've got mm -hmm. that real deep, um, I don't know the, the technical terms for it. He's deep, she's not so deep. Mm -hmm. It works very, very yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Andy, number seven, we're cracking on. Num number seven for me is this, it's just come out. It's The Marriage. Brand um, new. It's brand new, it's just come out, it just arrived. But um, I've been playing it to death because what they did, which was quite nice, um, they put their first EP as the, it's also on this disc. So I have their first EP, but it's just nice that they've tagged it on because it has some cracking uh, songs on it. And... Um, uh, David Byrne yep. here, pictured. Yes. He was in a band called Ahab, and they were really very good. And then another one, which I can't remember, the name's not going to come to me, but I used to follow them as well, kind of country-type songs. And, uh, and Kirsten Adamson, who's in the Gilly Flowers and things like that. And uh, this is just great. Between their two voices, uh, fantastic. Kirsten plays bass on most of this, sometimes guitar, but... She usually plays bass and uh, David plays guitar and they usually just do, you know, one microphone and just pretty much one take and uh, Diamonds uh, is the first track on it and that's just the one that sold me. I heard them do a, a very, very rough uh, sort of straight into the camera when they'd first written it. They, were, they obviously backstage at some concert or other and they'd just written this thing and they'd put it on a a YouTube uh, clip and uh, that just sold it for me. So, I mean, they can do no wrong in my eyes. It's just amazing. Can I, it's very country. It is. It's very, good. it's very good. It is indeed. It is. And there's mm -hmm. a, there's a lot of good um, Americana for want of a better term. Uh, I, I would say Americana rather. Than yeah. Country. And yeah. the manager okay. are absolutely and probably inspired mm -hmm. a lot of folk coming out after. There's a Glasgow band called Ashton Lane. There's Nicole and Elliot. Yes, yes. Um, that kind of classic, again, a bit like uh, Gillian Welsh and Dave Rawlings, the classic mm -hmm. of the Handsome Family, that duo, and there's a touch of the goth, Southern Gothic about it as well. Absolutely. I don't know the marriage as well as you do, but I heard the single, the new single. It's mm -hmm. just fantastic. 
isn't it? Isn't really it? Yeah. Uh, blown away by the way that their voices work together. Mm. Um, great. Okay, was that number seven from you? I think it was. I can't, I've lost track. <laughs> this is what happened last time. Mm. Up with nine. Okay, uh, <laughs> number seven for me is mm. Carla J. Easton. Nice. That's impossible stuff, uh, which came out in 2018, so we're getting close to present day now. Mm -hmm. And um, I rate Carla so highly as a songwriter, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. she's um, another person who's been a guest on the Scots We Hate podcast because, you know, you listen to what she's done, you think, I want to know more. And that's what the podcasts are really about. Um, but although I've picked impossible stuff, I could have picked so many recordings that she's been on. And her new album, Weirdo, is coming mm -hmm. out very soon uh, on uh, the aforementioned Olive Grove Records. But she just is... I was going to say she's steeped in pop music, but she's steeped in music in general. You know, kind of mm. one of these people that just comes out of her pores. Mm. Um, and uh, I saw her, oh man, about 10 years ago, and maybe more, maybe not, in uh, Mono with Teen Canteen. Um, that's, a, that's a lovely album. Love that yeah, album. and you know, was going, wow, who are these women? Mm. This is amazing. And they're kind of, the way that they worked together and the noise that they were making and the kind of whole wall of sound, almost Phil Spector, Ronnie Spector, mm -hmm. vibrant. I mean, it was just great. And yeah, everything, I've got everything I think Carla's ever uh, released and uh, um, and it's, every, it's other people should as well. She's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, and that one was um, Impossible Stuff, uh, which uh, came out in 2018 and was shortlisted for the Scottish Album of the Year Award um, that year as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, number eight, Andy. We're nearly getting there. Oh, the nights are fair drawn in. Um, this one. Ah, now what does that get, That's called Plenty of Lapwing, and it's uh, Alistair Roberts and James Green. And it was a, a, a small edition. They put out 300 in green and 300 in red. And uh, it's one, what's that? No, no, the cover, the cover. And um, it's Clay Pipe Music, www.claypipemusic.co.uk, who I just love the releases. They have more or less the same or similar artwork on all their, on all their um, they just make lovely records. And I was just so chuffed that uh, Alistair was on this. Audio podcast listeners, this one is really worth, watching on the YouTube uh, version because you get to see, it's interesting when we started doing these in 2018, they were nearly all vinyl and then we had the yeah. CD years, but it looks as though yeah. midway through the 2010s, both of us are kind of going back to, to vinyl and see these wonderful but, covers and, you know, that, that people are making to go with these records. But it, it's all about that now for me. It's, um, I know it's a kind of cliche, but the, the sort of um, time it takes to choose it and get it I clean it properly and put it on and say, I'm going to dedicate this time to sitting and listening to this thing. I'm not going to be doing the dishes or I'm not going to be uh, sort of whatever. I'm going to sit and listen to the music because somebody sat and decided that goes there, that goes there. Let's have more hi-hat. No, 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 we need a tambourine, but we need to lay on the tambourine. These are all creative decisions. And I think don't need to sit and listen to it like that. By all means, you know, anyone can just drive along and belt out a tune, but it's quite nice to sit and really examine the record that way and read who did what and the lyrics and all that, like you did when you were a kid, basically. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So think, that's... Do you think the return of vinyl has maybe changed again the way people think about recording music? I, I, what I'm thinking about is... You're right, you used to have an album was how many songs each side and it was about a certain amount of time. And then by the peak of CDs, which were almost 70 to almost 90 minutes long, some of them, and they were mm -hmm. packed with songs and the quality couldn't last having an original album with mm -hmm. 17 to 25 songs on it. It just couldn't mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wonder now if people are thinking more about what makes, mm -hmm. there's a great example coming up soon actually, but what mm -hmm. makes an album. Yeah, it, it, it's it's almost like a piece of art, and and I think it, it's going back to that way. If it is, it's the cover, it's the linear, the the notes, it's the order of the songs, um, because that's what. While it was great when it was new, I just think that that uh, ability to shuffle and search and skip is just not for me now. 
you know, fair enough if you're out in the dog walk and you go, no, I don't fancy that, you know, but if, if I'm at home, I want to listen to something that someone's put together carefully. You know? Yeah, I think that's great, me too. Uh, well, anyway, so just to get back to that, that's uh, yeah, Ali Roberts, and his, uh, I just love his voice. He can do no wrong, uh, as far as I can tell. And, uh, and just, another person who's played up in the gallery. Yes, uh, but he creates this uh, sort of, it's just this old world feeling, a bit like Robin Williamson does as well. It's almost Tolkien-esque, but it's this other sort of other place that he comes from, I think, when he's singing, just could be at the Middle Ages, you know? That gig that he did at, uh, at the gallery, um, when it was just him and guitar, mm -hmm. and it was and it was kind of mid, well, it was definitely midwinter because it was freezing, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, was mesmeric, and everyone that mm -hmm. was in that room was just, oh my God. And it's like, it was so quiet, I think it freaked him out a little bit, but it was just a brilliant gig. Um, and he is a, he's an absolute superstar, and you know, uh, um, I mean, National Treasure, absolutely. I love Ali mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what he has done has um, influenced so many people, I mm -hmm. think, mm -hmm. who are playing now. I think he's kept the candle burning for that kind of really ancient approach to songs and, you know, the, the, the that night, funnily enough, just not to bang on about it, but he did The Cruel Mother, which is God knows how long, it's verse after verse after verse. Just sat with his eyes shut, no guitar. That's right. And I, and with the wind howling outside and did the crow mother from start to finish and it was just electrifying. It was amazing. Yeah, he's a kind of old soul, isn't he? In the best possible mm -hmm. way. He's like a wandering minstrel. <laughs> You'd like that, I think. Mm -hmm. Anyway, my number eight is an EP. Mm -hmm. And it is Annie Booth and um, Spectral. Which I was going to choose I was going to choose that, Annie. Yeah. 2019, where are you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's an, mm -hmm. And now it's only four songs on it. But what mm -hmm. songs and what uh, I think Annie Booth's one of the best singer songwriters out there, and I think it really took the release of this EP to make me realize just how good she is. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, she also plays with Mount Doubt, who I've got an album coming out very soon. But uh, this is a very special record, I absolutely adore it, and I play it loads. Um, it came out, uh, it was a joint release with um, Last Night from Glasgow and Scottish Fiction. Neil Wilson's uh, record label, I should mention. And uh, yeah, uh, Annie is just someone who's incredibly special. Her songs are amazing. Again, going back to that, she draws you in. You really have to listen to what she's mm -hmm. saying and how she's singing it. Maybe mm -hmm. this is a sign of us just getting older, Andy, and we're willing to listen. But um, No, I don't think that. From doing the gigs in the gallery, what I'd realised from talking to the musicians is, you know, when you're arranging the, when you're sorting out the sound for them, when you're sorting out the PA and stuff, it's, it's quite often better just to have everything quiet so that people will come. The quieter you get, the more they'll listen. Whereas in a small space, if you just blast them, they're going to get fatigued, you know? Yeah, I suppose that's true. I suppose mm -hmm. that's true. Not um, kind of motorhead at, uh, live at Hammersmith or anything like that. No, but that has its place. Oh, it certainly does. Right, Andy, on to your number nine. Okay, number nine, I'm going to do as, well, I'll do it here because I've got this one here. Right. And you were men mentioned them earlier. Oh, did Salt I? House. I yeah, S Salt House, uh, who, it, again, is a bit of a super group, really. Um, yes, you've yes. got La Lauren McCall, Ewan McPherson, who, they're all great on their own, and you've got Jenny Sturgeon singing. Um, they're all fantastic on their own, and I've seen them all play on their own, but when they all play together, it's just fantastic. And that album, uh, Salt House, Undersong, which means the ambient noise of the landscape, the, you know, the background, Undersong. Um, it's just a wonderful record. Just go and get it. Can't tell you much about it, because I, I was just listening to it yesterday, actually, and I just enjoyed it so much. But um, uh, I the think- The latest you... album, which I think is called Who Am. That's right. It's just out. Yeah, it's been out for a wee while now, but it? right. it's a cracking record as well. It's really worth uh, checking out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but that, that, that's that, that's it. And going on again, you know, in the, in, in the folk tradition, you picked quite a lot of, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's living in the country, a lot of folky stuff. 
Very folky indeed. Okay, the man. angry Corey and the. <laughs> I, I, I've done a podcast with him as I know. well. Yeah. <laughs> I told the best. If you want to listen to one podcast just to laugh out loud, we did one with uh, Ronnie Brown from the Corries a while ago, and he was great fun. He was great company. And he told one of the best jokes ever, which I was not expecting. But, oh, man, it was so good. He was just a lovely, emotional, older man. You know, you get to a certain age, you just become emotional. And that, that came across. It was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't, great podcast. I it. Didn't do anything. He was no, great. exactly. Great company. Yeah. I absolutely yeah. love him. Yeah. Um, okay, my number nine is Andrew Vasilik. Oh, yeah. And the Paralian. Uh, so this is an incredible piece of music. Um, it was commissioned by Hospital Field House in Arbroath. Um, they asked Andrew to write new music for their 19th century harp, which had just been restored. And uh, boy, he gave them more, I think, than they could ever have thought. And the result was the Paralian. Um, nice. It's split, it, again, talking about albums that are proper albums, that's exactly what it is, this is. Apparently, I think I'm right about this, it's split into one side is his one journey to the house, and the other side is the journey away. So on one side he was kind of looking at the landscape, and on the other side he was looking at the seascape. Mm -hmm. So and he's written, he split it that way. One's about the land, and one's about the sea, mm -hmm. and uh, it's beautiful, beautiful pieces of music. I saw him do it with a full band, uh, and and I've seen him do it just with a, a, a keyboard and a couple of other people, but they are amazing songs and um, he's also got a, a new album coming out uh, soon uh, which will be mm -hmm. worth waiting for but I think uh, Andrew Vasilik is a very special musician indeed and the Paralian, well every home should have one, it's great Okay just thought, of another, I just thought of another one just as you were holding that up, I thought oh dang I've just forgotten something but never mind we shall continue, we shall continue. Um, it's number 10 Andy so she won't, we won't continue for too much longer Oh, can you read oh, that? I don't know if I can. It's on your phone. What is it? It's Mad Hat Magor, Unvarnished Scribbles. Oh, and he's a, a ra rapper from uh, Edinburgh and he appeared on uh, he appeared on uh, the um, Freestyle Masters CD. So I, I, I was listening to Freestyle Master and I thought, that's this really Edinburgh you know, there's a difference, isn't there, in, in, in the, just, in, uh, just in the rhythm of the speech and stuff like that. And I thought, I just loved listening to it so much, this kind of Edinburgh uh, rapping style. So, um, so I, got, I got his album and it's just fantastic because uh, just what he's rapping about, but also the way he's rapping, he just raps in a kind of Edinburgh style, which I'm not going to belittle anyone by trying to do it. So uh, you can rest easy. But... It's one of my favourite albums. Again, I listen to that all the time when I'm out with the dog. It's just, it, it, it cheers me up. And uh, he's sampled um, Led Zeppelin and The Police and all sorts. There's all, I don't know how on earth that get through the radar, but there's all sorts of brilliant samples. Maybe you it. shouldn't be saying and, this on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic, though. Yeah, it is. Um, it's what's the name of, uh, what's, I want to check this out. Mad Hat Magor. Oh, yes. Unvarnished scribbles. You, go. you could have done this afterwards once we'd finished, but I'm yeah, yeah. Scribbles. But I just, I just love it, man. It's just so good. I like um, this. The kind of um, picture we're getting is folk in the house, hip hop on the streets of Bremer. That's kind of when strutting with the dog. Excellent, yeah, excellent. Yeah, well, um, yeah. Okay, my number ten. Uh, we've kind of there's been a theme to this decade, I think, and it's been amazing voices and. What an amazing voice this man has. It's Angus Monroe and uh, Mirror Man. Now, okay. didn't know much about Angus um, before seeing him uh, last year. He came on as a guest of Fatsuit, um, who were playing. Well, I can't believe I haven't picked Fatsuit's album, actually. It's, it's, sitting, in my, it's sitting in my pile, Fatsuit, and I thought, uh, Yeah, but yeah. Um, so Angus Monroe came on, and you know, sometimes you see someone and they just blow you away, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And this voice, soaring voice, that just was, um, I can't even think to uh, compare it to, like a kind of jazz um, Robert Plant 
There you go. <laughs> right? You go. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. But the strength of the voice and the range of the voice, that was, yeah, but... that was what came out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's tickled me. Oh, I don't know why it's tickled you, but it is. It, honestly, they're an incredible yeah. singer. Um, it's, this is the album I've probably played most during the <laughs> lockdown. <laughs> Still laughing like a lunatic. Uh, <laughs> oh dear, ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens when we share a joke and when it's the, the evening's gone on for far too long. Yeah. We're nearly there. Keep going. We're nearly there, so. so it's the jazz Robert Plant himself. That's what I'm going to say. Anyway, I should, Angus Monroe, he writes amazing songs as well. It's not just his voice. Incredible songs. They're kind of um, like Ben Folds. Um, mm -hmm way back you could say almost like Billy Joel but you know um, keyboards, voice, stories in his songs um, if you like Ben Folds or um, I love uh, Ben Folds yeah I thought you did anything mm -hmm. like that then or even er even early Elton John you know the kind of a uh, tiny dancer type period it's very much like that it's been a real discovery for me um, one of my favorite discoveries of the decade definitely is Angus Monroe and a mirror man. Mm -hmm. The jazz Robert Plant as well now. The jazz Robert Plant, yeah. Cool. Uh, is that, so we've both done 10. We've both done 10. But I thought, since we've been talking about the Scottish Album of the Year Award, and mm -hmm. uh, you can still submit an album for it for the next, well, actually, by the time this goes out, probably only a few days. But uh, there's already over 200 albums um, being submitted, and then it becomes the long list, and then the short list, and all of that stuff. Um, I thought we could talk about what we might put forward tonight. It might change mm -hmm. the world, as our album of the year, if we were looking to hand out the Scottish Album of the Year Award tomorrow. So what would you go with? I would go with... Ah! The Domiciles. And you'd have a good shout as well, I have to say. Which I've been following for a long, long, long time. I've you got that little. You mentioned yeah. them to me ages ago and said, "There's mm -hmm. this band and they sound incredible." Before I think they were signed up. Ah, uh -huh. yes, yes. They've got a wee uh, CD out, a wee EP, and that's a cracking EP actually. There's only about five songs on it, but it's a fantastic wee thing. Uh, but this new album is just, uh, it's just another level. You know, it's. Um, well, they're all just died in the womb musicians and uh, psychedelic kind of musicians. And we've been talking have... about bands play quiet to draw you in. They do the exact opposite. Absolutely. They just flap. I mean, they really is, cry cry. play so loud that you can just jump into it and um, splash about. Um, they're an amazing yeah. band. Yeah. So, um, and I think. Um, well, you know, I know that they've got sound engineer background and all that kind of stuff, some of the guys, so they're, they're obviously really into how it sounds and it does sound amazing and it's all the things that I personally like in in this kind of record, you know, it's the sort of jangly guitars and it's the sort of psychedelic and the delay on the vocal and lots of reverb and um, pounding drum. I mean, you, you saw them live, didn't well, you? You said the yeah, drummer. Drummer's live. astonishing. And I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Mm. Their drummer is just mm. amazing. That's the other mm. thing I have to say about the last 10 years. There's some incredible drummers out there. Drummers uh, have got much better. You just used to sit at the back and do this, you know, but now everyone's so technically uh, amazing, you know, it seems. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, we've yeah. talked before about um, the Lola and Slacks track, which mm. has got Leslie yeah. McLaren drumming on it. And it's, uh, it's just fantastic. And you know, yeah. Joe Smiley's we talked about um, modern studies, and you've got Audrey Tate, and you've got oh, too many mm. to mention, but there are some mm. incredible drummers around there. Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. the fellow out there, um, I've forgotten his name, do I apologize, but the drummer with uh, domiciles is mm -hmm. astonishing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's st astonishing. But I'd love to, I haven't seen them live yet, to my shame, but that is <clears throat> the price you pay for living up in the tundra. I have to say, if you did get them up to the gallery, that might be one with the neighbors. Might I think we might need a, a bigger room. <laughs> be, you might have to get the tent that Big Country played in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, okay, well, my choice, if I was to hand out tomorrow and you put a gun to my head, which album would it be? It would be Half Form Things and To Live in the Flicker. Mm -hmm. A beautiful 
gatefold sleeve. Gatefold sleeve, nice artwork. It's very nice. I love this album. I love this band. Again, I went to um, Edinburgh to interview um, Morgan and a uh, Edward about the album and about the band. Um, and it was one of the longest uh, podcasts we've done. We just sat and mm -hmm. chatted for well over an hour. Uh, it's a great, mm -hmm. really enjoyed it. A great listen. But mm -hmm. um, they were the first band in a long time I became a real fanboy of from hearing mm -hmm. them and seeing mm -hmm. them live. And it was great to have that again. You know, mm -hmm. going back to the records we talked about way back in the first podcast in the 80s, you just mm -hmm. want to know everything about them and you you listen to it over and over again and you become obsessed with the lyrics and you become mm. obsessed with the cover and all of mm. those things. That's how I think about have formed things. I'm a real fan mm. of theirs and it's great. Mm -hmm. It's great to still mm. have music that can affect you in that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're superb. And To Live in the Flicker is such a good album um, that uh, you should absolutely check it out and it's mm -hmm. it could well be in the running for Scottish Arm of the Year who knows mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well Andy Career. we have come to the end of mm -hmm. the fourth podcast and our basically our uh, lives in 40 albums absolutely that's it then yeah that's it <laughs> we'll chuck it uh, um, I'm going to go I'm going to go and water my jazz plants <laughs> yeah quite right yeah. and a uh, Thanks for doing this. It's been really good fun to do. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been fun, hasn't it? Yeah, it has oh, been fun. Great. Because to kind of find, because not that we didn't see each other, but mm. you know, you've got your 20s and 30s, you're all doing other things. We kind of knew mm. what we listened to at the beginning and we kind of knew what we were listening to the, by the end because, mm -hmm. you know, I was coming up to see uh, gigs and, you know, read the website and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it's been really interesting to kind of see how our musical lives have some things have stayed the same and other things have kind of um, gone different directions. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been fun. Um, it surprises me. There's so much folk in my repertoire, but there's, you know, that's, that's yeah. how it is, man. Yeah, it yeah. is. How it is. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I hope um, you guys listening at home have enjoyed these as much as we've enjoyed doing them because it's been a blast. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll be back soon uh, with someone completely different. But in the meantime, cheers, Andy. Speak to you cheers, soon. Cheers, Andy. Yeah, cheers, man.